The most influential feminist of our time and an icon of university undergraduates is Judith Butler, whose seminal work, Gender Trouble, Feminism and the Subversion of Identity, was published in 1990. Butler has been heavily influenced by French postmodern philosopher Jacques Derrida. Derrida saw power as lying within language and believed that power can be subverted by changing language. Butler introduced the concept of the heterosexual matrix, the supposed social belief that to be normal, a boy must be masculine and sexually attracted to girls, and girls must be feminine and sexually attracted to boys. This supposed social belief is described as heteronormativity. Those who fall outside this matrix, Butler believes, are at risk of being discriminated against. Now, to undermine this matrix, Butler proposes that discourse should be changed to downplay the significance of biological sex, even to make it obsolete in language, and to emphasise the significance of a personal gender, a gender identity. Butler's strategy is known as queering, and the overriding philosophy that underpins this belief is referred to as queer theory, or, more explicitly, when it comes to the queering of the sex and gender binaries, gender theory. Queer theory has had a significant influence on Welsh Government policy, but Welsh Government ministers refuse to talk about it. Anyone who questions it is labelled transphobic. This is a massive democratic deficit. It also means that Welsh Government ministers are blind to an unfolding educational and medical scandal. Alison Park in OBE is a lecturer at Cardiff University with research interest in feminist theories. She recognises that the gender pay gap between men and women is largely due to men and women entering different professions. Over 90% of chemists, physicists, geologists, mechanical engineers, civil engineers, electrical engineers in Wales are men. So there's a long way to go. That's extreme segregation. Um, so I'm not sure that things are changing fast enough. Parkin believes that girls deterred from entering traditionally male-dominated professions because of social expectations. As she writes in the annex to the International Policy and Practice Report that was created as part of the Gender Equality Review, the social processes of gendering are constructed and carried through an oppositional binary whereby differently valued attributes, skills and behaviours are ascribed to men and women. Gender is an active process in which we are impelled to perform the signs of masculinity and femininity which vary over time and context, to be intelligible to others and to ourselves. She further writes, Latterly, postmodernist feminisms, queer and trans theories have argued that on the way to creating a level playing field, the gender binary should be challenged, disrupted, and the fluidity of gender identities recognised. In the Advancing Gender Equality in Wales plan created in 2020, it states, in March 2019, Welsh Government signed up to a vision and principles for gender equality in Wales. The vision. A gender equal Wales means an equal sharing of power, resources and influence for all women, men and non-binary people. This is a vision where the government aims to create the conditions for equality of outcome for all. The architect of the Welsh Government's Relationships and Sexuality Education Curriculum is Professor Emma Reynolds from Cardiff University. In 2006, an article of hers was published in the British Journal of Sociology of Education. The article was titled, They Won't Let Us Play Unless You're Going Out With One of Them, Girls, Boys and Butler's Heterosexual Matrix in the Primary Years. In the article, Professor Reynolds wrote, the heteronormativity of gender relations in the early years is certainly ripe for some gender trouble, and some of this work is well underway and radically disrupting a range of gender and sexual truths in what might be more fittingly described as the heteroformative years. 
in the Relationships and Sexuality Education Code that must be used by all publicly funded schools in Wales, it is mandated that children as young as three are taught to respect others whatever their gender. Where gender is an identity and not a synonym for sex. And many parents are concerned about the impact of this teaching on the psychology of young minds. Stop accepting us for who we are. Stop supporting us for who we want to become regardless of our gender. Start respecting everyone's unique talent and start supporting equality and happiness. Stand down our nominees. Start making peace in the world. Listen to us while we're singing right now. Between 2009 and 2016, there was an explosion in the number of children and adolescents referred to the Gender Identity Service, JIDS, at the Tavistock. The rise in the number of adolescent girls was particularly steep, from 15 in 2009 to 1,071 in 2016. The rise has continued since. In March 2024, Heaven David asked a question in the Senate. Will the Minister provide an update on the delivery of the LGBTQ plus action plan for Wales? Since publishing our LGBTQ plus action plan, we are working with partners to implement actions in the plan. Alongside this, we have published an LGBTQ plus plan action plan tracker so that everyone can monitor progress. The tracker also provides information on services to support Wales's LGBTQ plus communities. The Deputy Minister very kindly met with uh, my constituent Sean Donovan and his mother Sarah last autumn to hear about his experiences as a young trans man in Wales. should be aware of the BBC News story published over the weekend which told Sean's story in his campaign for better access to help for children and young people in Wales with gender dysphoria so they don't have to travel uh, to access services in England where services are still insufficient. The Welsh Government's pioneering LGBTQ plus action plan contains commitment to deliver a Welsh gender service, which would help to access, uh, address this lack of provision. However, it is a little concerning to read in the BBC story that the Welsh Health Specialised Services Committee said that there were no immediate plans to develop a Wales-specific uh, service. Does the Deputy Minister therefore agree that it is time for that committee to start making such plans? And will she work with her colleague, the Minister for Health and Social Services, to ensure that this commitment is delivered on in line with the action plan and recent calls from the Children's Commissioner for Wales. Can I thank Heffin David for not just his interest in this matter, but actually your absolute commitment to this and the support that you provided uh, for Sean and for his mother Sarah as well. And it was a privilege to have the opportunity to meet both of them some time ago now. And I know that you've since uh, followed that up with a letter and shared... Uh, Sean has very, very helpfully, very kindly shared some of his experiences because so I think that's incredibly, it's often difficult to do, but it's incredibly important to make sure the things that we're doing in the plan are the things that the community wants and needs. But it's so important that they are shaped by those lived experiences. So whether that's in you know, what we could do to build on our inclusive education within schools, the forthcoming transgender guidance for, for schools as well to support young people there and how we can share that best practice that we've seen in schools I visited. They've got really good clubs and safe spaces for young people and um, supporting teachers to support those young people on their and through their experiences and journeys too. And she said, you know, we're proud of the plan. There's 46 actions in the plan that have agreed, been agreed across government. Um, and we're absolutely committed to improving that gender identity services for children and young people in Wales, recognising the work that's already been done on an adult service. And I'm absolutely committed to working with my colleague, the Minister for Health and Social Services, to take that work forward. And actually, you know, the things that Sean has said, I think, you know, it really is important that I really want to see a service in Wales that is supports and is shaped by people's experience in a way that meets the needs of the community here in Wales. And I think the first year following that action plan has been about putting those foundations and the foundation blocks into place and now we need to build on that. And I absolutely look forward to building on that work under a future First Minister as well. Health Education and Improvement Wales provide training material for all medical professionals in Wales. This material was created by Dr Sophie Quinney in association with academic Ben Vincent. The material includes a section on non-binary identities.
Ben Vincent is an autistic man who uses they them pronouns and has lived experience of being non-binary. His PhD on non-binary gender identity negotiations, interactions with queer communities and medical practice was supervised by gender studies academic Sally Hines. Hines has tweeted, the theory that everyone has a gender identity is called feminism and a woman for me is someone who feels like a woman. She has even tweeted that before the Enlightenment, the female skeleton didn't exist. Not everyone agrees. Vincent is author of Transgender Health, The Practitioner's Guide to Binary and Non-Binary Trans Patient Care, and contributed to WPATH Standards of Care version 8. Links to his book and WPATH Standards of Care version 7 are listed as additional resources on the HEIW website. Recently leaked conversations and documents from WPATH reveal that its medical professionals demonstrate a lack of concern for long-term patient outcomes. Despite only writing his PhD paper in 2016, Vincent seems to have retired because of ill health. On the 26th of April 2022, Deputy Minister for Social Partnership Hannah Blythin reaffirmed the Welsh Government's intention to ban trans conversion therapy and announced that NHS Wales had signed the Memorandum of Understanding on Conversion Therapy, version 2. Today I want to further reaffirm and offer reassurance that the Welsh Government is committed to banning conversion practices for everyone in our LGBTQ plus communities. We will do everything possible within our devolved powers and seek the devolution of any necessary additional powers to achieve this. The Welsh Government will protect and value every LGBTQ plus person Action speaks louder than words, and it is clear we cannot trust the UK government to deliver that, the protections that every member of the LGBTQ plus community deserves. Today, I can announce the next steps this Welsh Government is taking and will take towards making conversion therapy a thing of the past. By the Commission of Legal Advice to determine all the levers we have in Wales to end the practice of conversion therapy unilaterally. And we will establish a working group of experts to include representatives from faith communities, the health and social care sector and children and young people's representatives alongside LGBTQ plus people to help this work and advise on key elements as a ban is developed and taken forward. In addition to this, I'm pleased to be able to announce that NHS Wales has signed up the Memorandum of Understanding on Banning Conversion Therapy. Organisations have signed the Memorandum and work in the provision of mental or psychological health delivery or commissioning such as the NHS commit to ending the practice of conversion therapy by actively ensuring they do not commission or provide conversion therapy. We are committed to building these steps and to end conversion therapy in Wales. There is a widespread support for a ban and I have received messages of support from a range of individuals and organisations from the health sector to face settings. Together we can make conversion therapy history. Together to make sure Wales is the most LGBTQ plus friendly nation in Europe where no one can or will be left out or left behind. Yeah. No. NHS Wales has signed the memorandum with the Coalition Against Conversion Therapy, whose chair, Iggy, or Lindsay Moon, is a member of WPATH. Moon believes that counsellors who believe that there are only two sexes cannot work with clients. You know, the idea of a two-sex model 
may be great for some people if that's what you want to believe, then fine, you believe it. But you can't believe that alone if you want to work with clients who do not sure. believe sure. that. Moon believes that having a gender identity is liberating. It isn't about gender ideology. It's about us all being able to understand the expansive way that we need to think about gender. It doesn't belong to anybody in particular. It doesn't need to be in a binary, which is inherent from uh, history and colonialism. It's a more expansive, free thinking idea that we need to uh, put into our uh, into our understanding of psychology, into our understanding of therapy, in order that we can explore with clients, with young people, their freedom to be able to be who they wish to be. In her book, Counselling Ideologies, Queer Challenges to Heteronormativity, in the chapter Towards a Queer Praxis, the Democratisation of Feeling, Moon writes... This chapter discusses discursive therapy practices informed by post-structuralist and queer theories as a way to deconstruct such specifications for therapists who do not want to reproduce narrow, essentializing and policing practices and that are founded on an ethic of justice, accountability and solidarity. Queer theory is premised on the post-structuralist notion of non-essentialized identities. Queer youth resistance to homonormativity can be viewed and leveraged through the lens of queer theory as a way to contextualize, historicize and politicize the ever-changing landscape of youth identity development. Moon is a member of the Welsh Government's Working Group on Banning Conversion Practices. Not every counsellor agrees with her views. The Welsh Government commissioned Stonewall to draw up the LGBTQ plus action plan. Stonewall have bought into queer theory. They quote Judith Butler. Politically, securing greater freedoms for women requires that we rethink the category of women to include those new possibilities. The historical meaning of gender can change as its norms are reenacted, refused or recreated. Or, as Stonewall's trans inclusion officer Kieran Medcalf puts it, bodies are not inherently male or female. They are just their bodies. In the LGBTQ plus action plan are new definitions of the words gender and sex. And it states, currently in the UK, only two sexes can be recorded at birth, which excludes intersex people. This idea is derived from post-modernist philosopher Jacques Derrida. Trans activist Geoffrey Marsh explains. Biological sex is fake. Yes, we all know that gender roles are fake, but do not say to a trans person, biologically male, born female, male-bodied. No, 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 no. There is no biological criteria for gender that is both universal and a binary in human beings. Where does that leave us? Free. Some think this argument is rubbish. Derrida's problem is that he assumes that if a distinction, if there's any marginal cases at all, that the language doesn't work. And Searle's saying, no, that's no problem to us. All of them are fuzzy. So how do you determine where the border is? Well, if you can find a spot between two concepts where you're not quite sure, what you, or if, you, if you're giving examples that are on the line, it's because you know where the lines are. That the lines admit of some fuzziness or of some disagreement does not mean that there is no center of the concept. The existence of non-killer cases does not turn poles into spectrums. And the right. fact that there are some marginal cases does not mean that there are paradigm cases. And the fact that there are unclear cases does not mean that there are no clear cases. Yeah, that's right. They think that where there's a fuzzy boundary between concepts, that there's a permeable, permeable boundary between concepts. 
And that's right. simply not true. Conservative member Gareth Davis was brave enough to criticise Stonewall. Gareth Davis. Yes. Dr. Deputy Slough, if the Welsh Government commissioned uh, Stonewall Cymru to carry out their stakeholder engagement sessions, and indeed the LGBTQ action plan references Stonewall data throughout. Furthermore, organisations such as the LGB Alliance Cymru and Merched Cymru um, requested to be part of the independent expert panel, but were ignored, sadly. We are now seeing swathes of organisations cutting ties with Stonewall due to their practices as a charity. We've seen University College of London, the London School of Economics, LSE, um, Channel 4, Ofsted, and the Equality and Human Rights Commission, and many more, all cut ties with Stonewall in the last few years. Aside from the poor value for money, uh, reasons cited for the flood of disaffiliations include concerns that Stonewall adopt radical positions not necessarily reflective of the LGBT community as a whole, and they have been accused of giving advice that misinterprets or contravenes the Equality Act. I'm sure Deputy Llewyd that uh, the Deputy Minister can appreciate that it is important to consult a wide range of uh, experts and views uh, on important matters and that decisions are not made based on the view of one organisation alone. I can see you crossing your arms uh, quite, uh, uh, yes, so well, um, quite informally there. But in light of the concerns regarding uh, Stonewall's conduct, uh, will the Welsh Government reassess their relationship with them and uh, their suitability for uh, public grants and ensure that con consultations involve a wider variety of organisations in the future which uh, best represents the views of the LGBT community. I say, Deputy Clowith, I'm, you, know, you can hear the, the, the reactions in the chamber here, and I'm really proud of the work we've been able to do within the chamber in Wales, in our Senate, by working together to create a better Wales for all of our LGBTQ plus community. And we're absolutely clear that is within and with the entire LGBTQ plus community, which is why we work with inclusive organisations such as Stonewall and a range of stakeholders, and more importantly, those voices of the LGBTQ community itself, because it's, you know, it's that saying nothing about us without us, and it's really important that we take that inclusive, um, holistic approach and that we work together to implement those 46 actions in the plan that works for Wales and you know that the, the member is muttering at me now but you know I have to say Gareth I'm, I'm really disappointed by your line of questioning it's it, it's, it's a cheap shot you're, you're playing to the gallery targeting organizations that have a long and proud history of supporting and advocating and campaigning for the LGBTQ plus community in the modern day Wales anybody who criticizes Stonewall and queer theory is labeled transphobic Adam Grace. Uh, yes, can I uh, support the Minister in rejecting the transphobia of the modern uh, Conservative Party? As Professor Reynold writes in her book, Girls, Boys and Junior Sexualities, Exploring Children's Gender and Sexual Relations in the Primary School, queer theory is linked to forms of politics which deliberately seek to break down the fixed boundaries between the heterohomo, gender and other binaries to multiply sexual categories and ultimately dissolve them. In the book, she acknowledged the help of Alison Parkin. Welsh school children are guinea pigs in a social engineering project. 